Good morning, everybody. I want to do a review on my auto water change system. As I'm in the middle of some changes, going from these overflow PVC pipes into something like this uh, bulkhead and a standpipe. Now, the with this PVC overflow, it's got a cut some weir notches into there as the water fills it goes into this large piece and gets carried up through the S the S shape of this smaller PVC pipe and on into a drain hose and down into my main two inch drain pipe which every tank will connect into to drain all their dirty water into this tub which I have a small pump that will pump all of that and it goes up into this little contraption I made of the drain water well let's turn that on we'll go up out the python and on into my sink. I, the beauty of this system is it's really almost all automatic. I do have to watch it. The uh, PVC overflow pipe, it's worked on, I've had five or six tanks hooked up to it, but on this one, it sometimes doesn't work which I have to jiggle it a little bit to get the water to flow out. It just fills up this weir all the way to the top and will overflow. So it's not fully automatic, but I'm here in the fish room and it takes maybe 30 minutes, a little longer, I guess, to complete water change. I have this 45 gallon I think garbage can filled with water and a pump down there it's a rated at a thousand gallons per hour I went with a larger pump as it comes out here and on up into this overhead pipe and since it was going up what is it I'd say about seven seven and a half feet I think I wanted a powerful pump so we don't lose pressure going on. And then in this one inch PVC, I just drilled a small hole and installed these quarter inch uh, connectors with an eight inch spout and comes on down to fill into each tank. On these 40 breeders, I just installed two. I could install a larger nozzle instead of an eighth inch, maybe a quarter inch, but that would require new pipe, new hoses. The standard airline hose fit perfectly on those one eighth inch nozzles. So I've just gone with that and installed two, so still, it runs twice as much water through. I try to position the water inlet on the opposite side from the drain so as much water uh, the brand new water isn't going right down the drain and we're flushing out the old system or the old water all right so to start I hooked up the pumps here to uh, this remote control little contraption I got at Harbor Freight. It came with three, I only used the two, but to start off we click one and the pump here starts pumping the fresh water down and if we peek way out there in the corner it started coming out. I go through make sure each of them are uh, putting out water now on these, you don't want the hose to be in the water 
because when I shut the pump off, a suction's created, and that will just siphon all your water back down into that tub. Uh huh. This one here, yeah. Oh, yep, water coming in. I don't hear any water leaking on the floor, so that's good. Yep. All right. Uh, this tank. Yeah, the angels are getting feisty. They should be breeding. The female has her tube out most of the way. Usually it's sticking out a little further. They're cleaning off the slate. So, should have another batch of fry this afternoon. But anyway, the yep, water coming in. It's all looking good. This tank I don't have hooked up yet. It's just standalone. everything looks good usually I'll go and uh, do something else or whatever I have to do in the fish room it I've timed it about 16 17 minutes sometimes a little more to uh, pump empty this entire 45 gallons into each tank I estimate about 10% water change it does but it's so easy, I can do it every day or every other day. Keeps the nitrates down. Right now, all of the system, all the tanks are draining. You can hear it really pouring into this drain tub. Alright, let's see this one. Yeah, you can see here, the water is rising above that weir not empty through that system. I haven't exactly figured out why. I've taken it out, reconstructed it a couple of times. But, and we give it a little jiggle. And now you can hear all this water really gushing, pouring down into the drain tank. It's not the, those slots are not too narrow that it doesn't break the surface tension of the water. I just don't know exactly why. But once I do that once, it works from there on out. So, let's check out the angles. There's water wisteria is really growing through the tank. So this tree up in here, these branches have all decided they want to shoot roots down into the gravel as well. This will be the hardest tank really to drill a hole and plumb. And then we've got all these plants, snails. <laughs> I'm doing the, I'm going to do the small tanks first for here a few weeks, make sure make sure everything runs well. So it's gonna be a chore pulling out all this these plants and gravel. And then here are the quarries. We've got six pepper and six albino quarries. I didn't see these peppered quarries for the first five months of their life. Are they? Well, they're probably five months old. They're born the end of October, 26th or something. But anyway, they would hide under the sponge filters all day, every day, only coming out at night. I introduced these albino quarries from my daughter's tank as we got cabrosis up there in hers now. And after about a month, these albino quarries are not shy at all. After about a month of them all out, they finally felt comfortable enough to come out here during the day. They mostly hang out under this wisteria. 
there's my little fuzz ball. Not sure exactly what it is. But it's there growing. Alright. Now let's cut away to the future when the water is done. And we're back. It's not quite finished yet, but I wanted to show the drain system here. Alright, as it's getting about three quarters full, I go ahead and punch number two to turn on that pump. And here the water, you can see pouring out the drain and it heads on out into the sink. Here if we look. I have a small air stone in here just to agitate the water while we're about halfway through. One caveat of the PVC overflow system is this gurgling noise. It doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes. If you were running, say, a single tank with a sump underneath and that pump was running 24 hours a day, I can imagine that would get annoying from Joey's video and stuff, if you put a cap over this top pipe with a smaller, just drill a small hole, you should cut that back. But since I only run this for 30-ish minutes every day or two, it doesn't bug me. It's just here in my fish room, not in a, I guess like 24 hours a day in the family room or something like that, a large display tank with a sump or something. All right. I also wanted to show, here's a closer look at the uh, overflow pipes. So you have this, is it an S? I guess that's a 5. But anyway, let's see if I can do this one handed. Here we have a large diameter with a cap on the bottom, this would sit in your tank. And then this pipe is load in there and as the water fills it travels through here and on out the drain. This requires what a large, for larger tanks like 40 gallon and up, I don't know, I think a 40 gallon might even be able to use smaller pipe. Uh, here I have a half inch pipe. This was pulled from a 10 gallon tank. Uh, I made it angled this way so that most of it all hangs in the back and you won't see it. Versus this way, it would be hanging out the side of the tank. Like here's your, the wall of the tank will be here and all this would be to the side. That's part of why I, this was my first one I made and realize if I just rotate it 90 degrees it's a much smaller footprint most of the piping is off in the back the way it should go that way yeah but you want twice the diameter for this stand pipe as the rest this is one inch yeah. two 90 degree elbows a T with whatever connector to your hosing is. This is a one inch T that goes to a half inch threaded. This hose barb and on down pipe going into the drain system. For this one, I used a 10 gallon. It had a one inch stand pipe here and then the same half inch drain hose. Oh, so how are we doing? We're still going. Do I have anything else I want to talk about? Yeah, let's sit and look at this school of white clouds, guppies. I need to come up a name for this style guppy. There isn't as much black in its tail. Oh, here's the better one. Oh yeah, look right straight at me. There we go. So far their tail's coming up yellow with hints of blue in it but only a few dots it's not even 
like a bluegrass style tale. Uh, they were fathered from this guy here, which his has a fair bit of black, but from orange, yellow, and red in his tail. I've so we need to, I may group, I have a few more younger fry from that pairing with him and where is she? This female, which is from the red dragon mosaics, although she has a yellow tail, but still a lot of black in it. These two don't fight, but when it's close to spawning time, the female likes to slide under the slate there and hang out there. Now here if we can see the breeding tube on these guys. Uh, Michael from Michael's Fish Room had a recent video on sexing angels and it reminded me with my other pair that died last week or not last month uh, the male's breathing tube points forward both in Michael's video and the pair I had before and this one his doesn't exactly point forward it's more down I'm not sure if that's Part of the problem why these two have never had anything hatch out. Let's see here, we're on B, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah. They've had 10 spawns, two I tries to raise, and they didn't amount to anything. The others are left in here, and after about a day and a half, they start eating them. Never any wigglers. So I'm thinking one of them could be sterile. Unfortunately, I don't have any others to pair them with and see if that works, but they still stand guard, keep me away from their babies when I've gone in to pull the slate out and try to raise them myself. They're right there attacking my hand and everything. So they put in all the work, just are unable to get anything, any kind of results. But here they, Sunday, a week ago, a week, a couple days ago, was their last spawn. When they, Saturday they spawned, Sunday they emptied it. But that one, they only laid maybe a hundred eggs. All the others have several hundred. In fact, one time, one of them, I took a picture of it and zoomed in in a paint program and started counting every individual egg, and it came up to I think it was like 736 eggs. It was shocking that they, I, you know, looking at the big clump of them and figure, yeah, there's a couple hundred, but it blew my mind that 700 eggs. And they'll do this every seven, eight days. Here we're on day nine, but very regular. So we keep trying to raise them until I can raise some more of these angels up. Down here, these platinum, the, there's a pearl scale platinum, and he's getting pretty good size. Another couple of months maybe that one will be breeding size and I could try swapping them in these other angels I'd gotten about the same time are still a bit smaller and then the black double dark are my newest additions them and the koi above have quite a long ways probably by the end of the year they'll be Pairing off 
and I could have quite a operation going with them. All right, are we done with the water yet? Well, there's a little bit left. And as you see, this is this pump is draining the water faster than the overflow systems pour it in. So I try to time it so that this tank doesn't run dry too soon. Okay, one of the advantages of staying here in the fish room is you'd start to hear the pump as the water level gets low. Like I said, I usually just set a timer for 15, 17 minutes around there and then come in and check on it. I installed a 90 degree elbow so we're able to suck up as much of this water as possible. This drain one still has a little ways to go. For some reason, I this worked great about a month ago, and then the pump started slowing down, not really able to push water out too much through the length of python hose and you know, on into the sink. And I found the same sort of 90 degree elbow. That I installed in the pump to drain all the way down the bottom was slowing the suction, I guess. I bought another pump here that's twice as strong. This one is, I think, 800 gallons. And the same thing when I installed the elbow, it barely is able to trickle out of the sink. I removed the elbow and it goes back to full speed. Not sure I'm You'll lose a little bit of pressure on 90 degree turns in your piping, but I'm not sure why it goes from 800 gallons per hour to about 2. So anyway, this one is just about finished. It's a little fast forward and go ahead and stop that up. Okay, now on the side here, I have this. We shut off the hose to the drain, and then we'll turn on this hose to refill the clean bucket here. And I'll be right back to reverse the python in the sink and start filling. Okay, now I hesitated to turn these knobs until now, until I started the water flowing in. As I like to let it run for a bit into the drain tank so that I'm sure all the clean or the dirty water has flushed back down. And here we shut off this one, open up the clean hose, and here it starts pouring it. Now we just Add our prime to it. Let's see here. We'll do about that much. Normally, I do measure out one cap full. And that cap full is about a teaspoon, and it's good for 50 gallons, so 45 is close enough. Okay. So now again, this I let run for 15, 17 minutes, and then I'm all done with my water changes. This is a very easy system to set up. I've been able to enjoy these tanks more than sitting with a gravel back and draining and filling each one. And hopefully, as I install these bulkheads and drill the tanks, I'll have it even 
easier and more foolproof. Like I say, this one setup here is the only one that has given me a little bit of trouble, but just a little knock of it. It worked good for a couple weeks and then stopped, but it hasn't been bad enough for me to redesign everything completely. Now let's check out the mess of shrimp as we close out. I just wanted to give a update. It's been a couple hours since I ended the other video and here they are already started spawning and I was males breeding tube is certainly out more right now it's not quite pointing forward but I don't really think that is his issue as he does go through the motions running over the eggs Right now he's fighting me, but here they go. Ignore me. Just go about your business. I think it is pointed forward. Oh. And the glare on the glass makes it kind of difficult to zoom in. I definitely, you know, their breeding tubes are different shapes. Definitely not both females. Obviously not both males, so. Still leaves me to wonder why nothing ever survives here. I guess we'll just have to wait here one or two days and see what goes on. I'm going to leave them alone in the fish room here for the next few hours let them do their thing and we'll see what the final amount looks like how many they lay see right now this batch is about how much they laid last time which is a lot lower than the other nine times He just knocked some of the eggs off. I don't know where she got two. Oh, there she got the third. So you're going to spit them out? No. So we'll just make new ones.